Last month I made a video on untargetability in League of Legends and whether or not it's a healthy or unhealthy mechanic in the game, along with discussing if it should be removed. The video got almost a thousand comments, which is awesome, so I thought about making a sequel episode talking about another extremely controversial mechanic, Stealth. Just like on target ability, a lot of people are displeased with seeing a champion on the enemy team have stealth as a core mechanic, and that's usually the only part of their kit that happens to make them as annoying to fight as they are. So in today's video, I'm going to introduce my thoughts on stealth in League of Legends, why it might be necessary for the champions that have them, and why it might not, whether it's fair, unfair, or if it should exist at all. And of course, the goal is to look at both sides of the story to see if there's a possible middle ground we can find. And after you're done watching, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. First, what exactly is stealth? Stealth is the mechanic that renders a unit invisible for a determined period of time, and is divided into two main categories for champions. Camouflage, also known as strategic stealth, and invisibility, which is tactical stealth. This change was made a while ago during the Assassin rework in Preseason 7. Camouflage represents champions who can undergo stealth for a long period of time, usually activated preemptively before entering the heat of battle to sneak up on opponents undetected. In exchange, camouflage units can be detected by enemy champions if they get too close, which means they can't really be used in active combat, but are amazing for roaming around the map without giving away your position. The poster child for camouflage is Evelyn, but there are also others like Pike, Rengar, Senna, Twitch, and Viego. Although, since Senna and Viego have visible effects to their abilities, it poses a question as to whether or not they should be considered camouflage, since you may not be able to see them, but you can still see their shadowy, misty effects. Then there's invisibility, which I would say is the more despised of the two by the community. Invisibility represents champions who can undergo stealth for a short period of time, usually activated during combat to quickly reposition or escape from a fight. Ordinarily, it's possible to see camouflage champions if they get within range of a control ward or an enemy champion, but invisible champions cannot be revealed under conventional circumstances, only by true sights such as towers, tether abilities, twist of eight salt, etc. Shaco, Akali, Kha'Zix, Vayne, and Talon are champions who utilize stealth to snipe out targets. It's incredibly rare for non-assassins to have invisibility, as according to the wiki, Nico and Wukong are the only ones. Timo, I mean, eh, I, he could assassinate, sort of. When it comes to most competitive video games, vision plays an important role in strategy. Being able to know where your opponents are is often half the battle. In genres with bird's eye views, such as RTS games or MOBAs, you have an aerial view of the map, which normally gives you a semblance of omniscient vision. To make sure there's still an element of surprise though, they obstruct your sight using fog of war artificially darkening areas of the map that are out of your unit's immediate vicinity. In first or third person games like shooters, the only thing you're really able to see is your field of vision. If enemy players can stay out of your line of sight by hiding behind an obstruction, even if they're literally right next to you, you can't see them. Regardless of the case, vision in most competitive games represents knowledge, and knowledge is half the battle as they say. In League of Legends, vision control may be one of the most critical macro elements that a team needs to learn. This does matter more in professional play when coordination and experience are at their peak, but even in individual solo queue it's just as important. Ask yourself this, do you think your win rate will significantly improve if there was no fog of war on the map for only your team? The answer will unequivocally be yes. With no fog of war, you basically can never get ganked, the enemy team will never be able to sneak Baron, you'll be able to track exactly what's going on at all times. Just like in real life warfare, by knowing exactly where your enemy is, you already have a massive advantage. One other important note about Vision in League is that it begets target ability. In first person shooters, everything is a skill shot. There's no point in click attacks, which means a shot in the dark can still land on someone. Or if you have reason to believe someone is hiding just around that wall, and if there's some weapon or tool you can use, like a grenade, you can go for some geometrical outplays. However, in League of Legends, to attack someone, you need to be able to click on them. And a lot of abilities in this game are also targeted, which requires you to click on them. Meaning, if you can't see the champion, you also can't attack them. This necessity for vision is what causes so many players to be annoyed by stealth, as not only does it prevent them from seeing where the enemy is, which is already a significant disadvantage, but they more than likely also cannot attack them. Now, in fairness, stealth champions also can't attack without revealing themselves. But while invisible, they can move to a more favorable position, or simply disorient their target. When you reappear out of stealth, you'll be in a totally different part of the screen, which then forces the other player to physically move their mouse to where you are now. 
And if you're playing someone like Akali, Vayne, or Cossacks who can do this multiple times per fight, each moment of stealth gives you about a 15 to 30 frame advantage. That's a quarter to a half a second of time you can act faster than your opponent. The average human reaction time is around 16 frames, but they also have to readjust their attacks, mouse cursor, and whatnot, also factoring things like input lag. Stealth is more than just not being able to see or target someone. In an intense fight, it literally can mean the difference between life or death. And for the person fighting a champion with stealth, it's more often than not death. So first let's talk about all the reasons I can think of that makes stealth a necessary or fair mechanic, and then later on in the video, Let's talk about all the reasons I can think of that make stealth unfair or overpowered. Though I will be adding timestamps in the description, I urge you to listen to both sides of the story because I can imagine many of you already have made up your mind on this. Usually champions who carry invisibility in particular have that and only that as a defensive tool, meaning if they were to burn it aggressively, you should in theory be able to mount a counteroffensive after it's over, which is a valid point. Champions with a consistently applicable stealth like Kha'Zix or Akali have only that to rely on fights. They don't have any hard crowd control, shields, debuffs, or anything of the sort. As for everyone else, they have only one instance of stealth. Another form of self-protection like crowd control, shields, heals, things like that would fill the spot for champions that would otherwise not go stealth. That is very true. The only champion with quote-unquote spammable stealth that also comes with another defensive ability is Vayne, but we're not going to talk about her. The majority of champions with invisibility would be completely vulnerable without their stealth. Technically speaking, stealth doesn't have the same level of get me out of this bad situation as untarget ability. You're still able to be hurt by any champion with skill shots or AoE attacks. Moreover, stealth can be broken by attacking, so players who are a little too trigger happy can accidentally reveal themselves and be exposed too early, which leads to most likely their imminent demise. If we look at it that way, stealth can be seen as a tool for skill expression just like skill shots or attack moving. You can see a noticeable difference between a good or bad Shaco player for example. The bad Shaco might use stealth a little too predictably using it to only get closer to their target or running away. A good Shaco might feign retreat but then queue right back into the fight to one-shot the greedy backline chasing him down. You might also find a situation where the real LeBlanc stands still while a doppelganger runs away, which can trick people into chasing the fake one. Actually, I think Wukong does this a bit more consistently, but you get what I mean. There are some pretty nasty plays you can make by juking a person out, extending your stealth duration by going into brushes and things like that. The second argument in favor of stealth is that in a similar nature to untarget ability, it serves as a way for a champion to dodge attacks. League of Legends has a lot of point and click abilities in the game. Not nearly the same amount as back in the day, but there are still a lot. Stealth can be used as a way to avoid champions who can dish out a lot of damage. After all, if you're dueling a Master Yi as Vayne, he's going to absolutely myrtleize you unless you take full advantage of him not being able to hit you. It gives squishy champions some way to handle the meatier and stronger champions like fighters and hyper carries who would normally destroy them head on. And even though you're not actually dodging point and click attacks in the same way as untarget ability, as I mentioned before, that extra second or two of being invisible can be enough to get your cooldowns back after a rotation or to kite them if you're playing again someone like Vayne. It's a necessary evil, so to speak, to have stealth because there would be no other feasible way for these champions to avoid danger. Obviously, it's not a good design choice to give assassins a Pantheon E or a Trinomir ult, that would be ridiculous. Lastly, there are ways to reveal stealth champions. Earlier, I talked about how invisible units can still be exposed with True Sight. Global elements do exist that allow any champion, even those without access to True Sight, to deal with stealth champions. We have Oracle Lens or the Scryer Plant in the jungle, for example. Sure, the former may still render the target unclickable, but at least you can keep track of their positioning and chase after them until their stealth wears off. Also, control wards can be placed in strategic locations to prevent camouflagers like Evelyn, Pike, and Rangar from sneaking up behind you. And again, usually stealth is the only thing that makes those champions dangerous. Take that away from them and it's pretty easy to beat them down no problem. The cases in favor of stealth do bring up valid points. Unlike on target ability, there's actually legitimate counterplay for these champions, with certain characters that straight up hard counter them, such as Lee Sin and Twisted Fate. So now that we've established the for, let's talk about the against. The main argument condemning stealth as a mechanic is that it puts the invisible champion in a far greater advantage over their opponent. Because remember, not only does vision prevent you from seeing someone, but for certain champions, since there's no way to attack something that you can't click on in the game, they're screwed. Even when they do reveal themselves to attack you, by the time it takes for your reflexes to kick in and move your mouse on the enemy who's now in a totally different position, 
they'll disappear back into stealth and you're just playing a game of whack-a-mole, only you have a quarter to half a second to react before the mole goes back under. Though camouflage allows players to enter stealth for very long periods of time, it's balanced by the fact that it's completely useless when in actual combat, meaning a Rengar or Twitch can't just peace out with their Q or ultimate the moment things get bad. Also, aside from Teemo and LeBlanc, every other invisibility champion can perform it on demand. The instant you try to engage on Shaco, he just Qs away and there he goes, all safe and sound. Talon and Kha'Zix can do this relatively easy too. On the other hand, Kaisa, Nika, LeBlanc, Akali, and Wukong might still have to find a way to weasel their way out of whatever rock and hard place they're now in, since their stealth doesn't last nearly as long, and in Akali's case, she can only stay invisible within her giant smoky donut. But these champions are perfectly capable of one-shotting you because they're all skirmishers or assassins. Even if they have to use their stealth defensively, it buys them enough time to situate themselves before turning the fight. A couple seconds is all they really need. I should also mention, most abilities that make you go invisible come with a movement speed boost. Akali's Twilight Trot gives 30-50% to decaying over 2 seconds, Kai's Evolved Supercharge is up to 150% for half a second, Kha'Zix is 40% while Stealth, which can either be 2.5 seconds total or with Evolved Ultimate a whopping 6 seconds. Talon gets 40-70% to for 2.5, Kiana's Brush Q is 20% for 3.5, Nikos is 20-40% to for 3 seconds, so on and so forth. Stealth champions can move very quickly while out of sight, allowing them to cover more distance than one would expect. There's just too many benefits you get out of stealth, in some cases far more than even on target ability, as at least with that, champions can time exactly when you're about to pop out again. But with stealth, you have no idea when they'll reappear, and more importantly, where. Are they going to wait out the full stealth duration or pop out early? Are they right on top of you or far away? Are they going to be in front of you or behind you? Without an oracle lens, you have zero information on where the enemy is, which is a bigger deal than you might think. Stealth can be used offensively, defensively, to stall for time, to catch up to people, to escape. There's too much you can do thanks to being invisible that players argue it's too unfair. Second, the champions provided with stealth are, as described earlier, extremely high threats, and literally no one else. Almost every champion who can go invisible can dish out inconceivable amounts of damage. Yes, including Teemo because his mushrooms are invisible, which makes not being able to see where they are all the more oppressive because how the hell are you supposed to deal with someone who can appear right in front of you and tear you not only a second but a third asshole without you being able to do anything about it? It's not necessarily invisibility itself that might frustrate people, but rather who can go invisible. I can't imagine it would be too much of a problem if someone like Sona or Janna disappeared because they're the support. Is it annoying? Yeah, but they're not very threatening to begin with, who cares? Even a tank, would it bother you if let's say Orn was able to go invisible? Mm, maybe a little, but you don't have to panic about being deleted by him in a couple seconds. We've seen just how ridiculously dangerous champions without stealth can be thanks to the new Duskblade. Master Yi, Sivir, and Gangplank are so scary with it because they all hit like a truck. So it begs the question, why are DPS and Burst Champions the only ones with stealth, when it feels like they should be the last ones to be given such a mechanic? So having looked at stealth through the perspective of both sides, it's hard to really gauge who's in the right. It also depends largely on the role, I think. Obviously, every AD carry main hates Akali, Kha'Zix, Rengar, Shaco, Evelyn, Pike, with a passion burning hotter than hell, whereas a Dr. Mundo one trick probably doesn't care. But once again, just like on target ability, it's important to consider the individual champion's strengths outside of stealth. Having stealth in your kit doesn't make you overpowered, and not having it doesn't make you underpowered. So let me know in the comments down below what you think, and please be mindful that anecdotal experience is not always conducive to fact. Though I understand it can be difficult to remain unbiased, since I'm sure the majority of League players don't even like stealth to begin with. If you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated, and if you like to see more content like this, consider subbing to the channel. Also, check out the video description down below for links to my Discord and social media, as well as a playlist containing all my discussion videos if you'd like to watch more. But that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.